Hello Year 10. Today, in this video, I'm going to be looking at page 302, which is on 3D shapes, and it's going to consist of plans and elevations, surface area, and volumes of prisms. To begin with, we're going to look at plans and elevations. Now, a plan view of any 3D shape or any solid is a view from directly overhead. View from directly overhead. Kind of like a bird's eye view. An elevation is a view from either the front of a shape or the side of a shape. So you can have a front elevation or a side elevation. So it's a view from the front or side. Okay, so we're going to look at this example. So I've drawn here this sort of L-shaped prism and I've labelled where the plan view is, the side elevation and the front elevation. You need to be able to go from a 3D shape to drawing the 2D views or elevations and also going from the 2D views or elevations to the 3D shape. Okay. We are going to go from the 3D shape to the 2D views here. Um, so if you'd like to pause the video here, you can have a go at it yourself. Um, otherwise, we'll get on with these ones now. So the plan view, like we said before, directly overhead. So if I was staring down at this shape from directly above, I would see a rectangle that is too wide and three long, wouldn't I? Okay. So I would draw out this shape using a pencil and a ruler, unlike me. So it's two down and three wide. And I'm also drawing in the squares, so I know. In an exam, you may be given measurements, okay? And you would need to accurately draw in that 2D shape there. So for example, if this was a two centimeter by three centimeter shape, you would need to make sure that your plan view had two centimeters accurately drawn coming down here and three centimeters accurately drawn going across there. Okay. Obviously, depending on how we hold the shape, we'll determine where our plan, view, side elevation and front elevation are, but that will be specified in the question as it is here. My side elevation is seen from here, so I can just see a nice square, which is two by two. So again, using a pencil and a ruler, we can draw out this. Please don't follow my uh, poor drawing of pen and no ruler. Make sure you are using a pencil and a ruler here, please. Now a front elevation, so it's coming from this direction. So I wouldn't see any of this stuff at the back because I'm directly at it from this side here. So I would see just this little L shape there, which is three along, two up on the side. So I would go three along coming down here, two up. Okay, and remembering that we're using a pencil and a ruler and drawing it out, okay? So in an exam, you may not get these multi-link cubed ones. You may get ones with actual measurements on them, and you need to make sure you are accurately drawing them in your 2D views, okay? So moving on to surface area now. Surface area is just the total area of all faces, okay? So this would be really key to get down into your notes. Um, as is the stuff above, obviously, but all of that stuff above should be fairly straightforward and you should remember that from the 7, 8 and 9. Um, but if you need to get this stuff in your notes as well, please pause the video and go back and make sure it is. So surface area is the total area of all of the faces. Okay, so we have got this triangular prism here, this right angled triangular prism, and we want to find the total surface area of this shape. So in their book, they've drawn out the net. I, I don't think that's a good idea. I think that wastes quite a lot of time. And actually, I think it's far more efficient to just draw quick sketches of all of the faces so you can tick them off as you're going along. So I can see that I've got five faces, two triangles, this rectangle at the side, this rectangle underneath, and this slanted rectangle just here. So I need to make sure that I can see five calculations in my working in order to get the right marks. So I'm gonna start off with this little triangle at the front. So I'm gonna draw a 
very quick sketch. So it's going to be four centimeters there, three centimeters there, and I know it's a right angled. So I don't need this length here because I only want the area and I need to know that the base and the height must be perpendicular. If they are not perpendicular, well, they're not the base or the height. So I'm going to find the area of this shape. So I know my area is equal to a half times base times height, which is six centimeters squared. OK, I've got two of them. So I'm going to pop a little times two next to that triangle. So I know that I've got two of those triangles. And underneath, I'm going to write six centimeters squared times two, which is 12 centimeters squared. I'm going to circle that 12. I'll get to why I've circled that in a minute. I'm now going to work on this back rectangle here. OK, so this one at the side. I can see that it has a height or a width of three and a length of eight. OK, so I'm going to draw a quick sketch of that. So it has a height of three, a width of three and a length of eight. So it's three centimetres there, eight centimetres there. So now the area of this shape is equal to three centimetres times eight centimetres, which is 24 centimetres squared. And again, I'm going to circle that 24. I'm now going to work on this bottom rectangle, this base of my prism, which I can see is four centimetres by, I know this is eight, okay, because I know that is eight, and therefore this must be eight as well, as is this length going along the bottom here. So I've got a very similar rectangle to what I've just drawn. It's going to look pretty identical, but the dimensions are going to be slightly different. So the width is now going to be four, and the length is now going to be eight. And I know the area of this is equal to four centimetres times eight centimetres, 32 centimetres squared. And again, I'm going to circle that one. My final one is this slanted rectangle, the rectangle right on the top. And I can see that is five centimetres wide and eight centimetres long. So again, the last time, draw out our identical rectangle with slightly different dimensions, five centimetres and eight centimetres. And so my area is equal to five centimetres times eight centimetres, which is 40 centimetres squared. And again, I've circled that. Now, I have five faces, but only four things that have been circled. So the reason only four things have been circled is because I've times my first triangle by two. And the reason I've circled these ones is because I know as I was working along, they were my final answers to all of the faces. This means I don't confuse anything else I've written anywhere in my working or use it in my final answer. OK, so to find my total surface area. Or SA for short, I'm just going to add these all together. So I'm writing down what I'm doing. I'm communicating. I know exactly what I'm doing. And then my answer is 108 centimetres squared. OK, now make sure that we're using the correct units throughout. So my question is in centimetres. And because I'm working in area, it's obviously got to be centimetres squared. So I'm using the correct units throughout. I've communicated my working nice, clear structure. OK, now. For the last little bit, then, we're going to do a volume of a prism. Now, if you're not too sure what a prism is, I'll explain it now. So a prism is any 3D shape which has a constant cross section. Now, a cross section is just the front face of the shape. And if I was to cut parallel to that front face anywhere along this shape, so I could, I could cut it here as long as I'm parallel to the front face or here or anywhere. Uh, and I open it up and I split it into two different parts, I should see the exact same shape. If I do see the exact same shape as the front face, then it is a prism. Okay. And now the volume of a prism is defined as the area of the cross section times the length. Okay, so that's a nice key thing to get down in your book. So my cross section is just the area of this front face here. I've got the height, I've got the base. I know they are because they are perpendicular. 
So I know the area of my cross section. A is equal to a half times four meters times two meters, which is four meters squared. And then to find the volume, which I'm gonna call V, that's equal to area of cross section, four meters squared, times the length. So that's gonna be times eight, which is 32 meters cubed, sorry. Remember in volume, we work in meters cubed or centimeters cubed, but because we're obviously in meters here, it's gotta be meters cubed, okay? What I'd like you to do now is have a go at the questions on page 303 and make sure that you've marked your work when you are done. Okay, thank you.